Good morning. I want to first thank you all for being here for our fourth State of the University address. Uh, first, I want to thank those who are watching us on Facebook Live. Hi, Mom. Uh, second, I want to welcome the members of our community that surrounds us, our alumni, uh, local community members, representatives of government, uh, members of boards and councils. Um, in particular, uh, Isaiah Benny, who's on our Board of Trustees, Adolphus Belk, who's the faculty representative to the Board of Trustees, and Monty Belton, who's our student representative to the Board of Trustees. We thank you all for being here today. Um, and most of all, I want to thank our winter faculty, staff, and students. So much of what I want to highlight today are the results of your good work. And really, this has been a great year. I've said several times, I don't think there's ever been a better time in winter, and I'm going to highlight a lot of that today, but also talk about areas that we want to continue to improve. So let's start with the highlights. There we go. Uh, this year we had our best overall ranking in 25 years in the U.S. News and World Report. It went from 25th place to 17th place. That's a dramatic increase um, in just one year. So congratulations on that. Now my second question after I saw the rankings is why did they go up? And so I started to look into some of the numbers. And one of the things I was particularly proud of was that our peer assessment improved pretty dramatically again. So we continue to be seen very favorably by our peers, other institutions. And you see that in the next slide as well. But we had a number of different areas where we improved. We went from 17th place to 18th place, 8th place for best college professors. Uh, this also, this past February, we were designated a Purple Heart Campus, which is again recognition of what we do and, and our commitment to our veterans. And so we're proud of that one. We tied for 10th place among most innovative schools. And we went from 15th to 11th best undergraduate teaching. All again, judged by our peers as being innovative, of doing outstanding work in the undergraduate teaching area, and being welcoming to our veterans. We also were ranked 22nd in social mobility. This is a new ranking by the US News and World Report focusing on how students do uh, who are, have uh, low, come from lower social classes and how they're able to move through and towards graduation. So we're proud of that. But really, this is just overlying all the things that we talk about within the winter plan. And so I'm gonna move on to the winter plan. We're gonna focus on particularly our five major goals, a number of the metrics in each of the areas, and um, also discuss some of the major activities that happened in the last year and different accomplishments, as well as some of our plans for the future. So let's start with goal one. Goal one really focuses on student success and inclusive excellence. It looks at a number of things, including enrollment, graduation rates, retention rates, all of which we'll talk about, but there's really much more. And so before we get into the metrics, I want to highlight some student success from the last year. In the intercollegiate athletics, our women's tennis team won the Big South Championship for a record-breaking 21st time. They were led by Lauren Proctor, who was the fourth, for the fourth time was the Big South Player of the Year. Uh, for those of you who are at home, that's exactly four times more than I ever want to play with your award, so that's pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, Megan Kaufman was the Big South Woman of the Year, so both outstanding players on that team. But that was really not all that happened this spring. If you're play, paying close attention, we were in the finals in three other sports, in lacrosse, softball, and baseball, all made it to the conference finals, which is very impressive accomplishments by our athletic teams. And this fall has started out great, led by women's volleyball, which is still undefeated in the conference, still undefeated at home, and really having one of their best seasons ever. So we're very proud of what they're doing on the athletic fields. They're also excelling in the classroom. 70% of our student athletes, and this is a record for us, won the Big South Conference Presidential Honor Roll. Again, this is for student athletes who excel not only on the, on the field or on the court, but in the classroom. So 70% achieved the marking to be in that uh, presidential's, presidential honor roll. On top of that, this year we reported our highest ever graduation success rate of 90%. That means that the student athletes who started here six years ago, 90% of them earned a college degree within six years. Again, our highest ever and really a pretty impressive total for any institution, so we're very proud of that. And there's also individual accomplishments among our student athletes. Joey Jennings, who is a pole vault on our track and field team, won a prestigious NFF, NSF fellowship uh, to go on for his doctoral program. This follows the NSF fellowship won by Raven Timoney last year. So two years in a row, we've had someone win one of those prestigious scholarships. So the success of our students on an individual basis is, is pretty amazing. We'll talk about them now as a group. And let's start with graduation rates. We already knew going into this year, based on the number of students who graduated in five years, that we were going to set a record. We have never, in all the years we've been reporting graduation, we've been above 
Last year we were at 56, this year at 64%. That's an eight percentage point jump in just one year. I frankly have never seen a jump that big in all my years of higher education. So that is something we should be particularly proud of. And we exceeded our 2019 stretch target as well as our 2025 target. So that's something, again, we should be very proud of. On top of that, a large majority of our students who graduate, graduate in four years or less. And that trend has continued this year. I sometimes have to explain this to people because they say, oh, six years is the new norm because we do a six year graduation rate. No, actually about 75% or more of our students who do graduate, graduate in four years or less. And in fact, we're seeing an increase in the number who are graduating in three years or less. So our students are progressing towards graduation and doing so more quickly than ever. And we're very happy with that. Last year, we also had a record number of applications. Over 6,000 students applied to Winthrop University. That's a 15% increase over our previous record in 2006. This year, things are continuing on that same trend. I'm happy to report we're up about 425 applications compared to this time last year. So 425 over what was our record last year and about 1,500 more than we had this time two years ago. So the trend in applications want to continue, that's continuing. Again, what this indicates to us is that the interest in Winthrop has never been greater and that we're getting out there and people are learning about Winthrop and are at least interested enough to apply, which is something we're proud of. One of the things we've also done, in addition to a number of things we've done in access enrollment management, is created a new website. This launched this past year. It's now more user-friendly, more functional on different devices, and traffic is also up on our website. So in addition to seeing more applications, more people are checking Winthrop out through the website. So we're very happy with that. Now let's talk about total headcount. We were up about 51 students from last year, but still short of what our goal was for this year. However, there's a number of positive numbers to point out. We had an 8% increase in our freshman class compared to this time last year. We had over a 16% increase in graduate students, largely driven by our online programs. So those trends both suggest future numbers will get even better. In addition to the website, we're also doing some other things to help make sure that those numbers continue to grow. One of the things we did this past year was work with a financial aid leveraging firm, EAB, to work on how we use our scholarships to best need, meet the needs of our students and build the freshman class. Um, that was particularly helpful in having that 8% increase, but I should point out that we well exceeded what they predicted we would do this year, and we actually well exceeded what they predicted we would do two years ago as well. So for two years in a row, we've well exceeded the predictions of EAB on what we should be able to bring in given the scholarship dollars we have available. Again, this is a group effort, but Eduardo Prieto and his team in Access Enrollment Management has done an outstanding job over the last couple of years, and I don't think people realize how, how hard it was, given the scholarship dollars that available, to have the classes that we've had over the last year. So congratulations on that. We've also been focused on keeping the tuition affordable. Over the last few years, we've maintained relatively low tuition increases, and this year had only a half a percent increase for undergraduate students in state. So we're continuing to try to keep uh, Winthrop affordable for all of our students, which is important. Uh, this has been the lowest we've had in decades as far as a percentage increase, and these continual increases have really kept tuition from growing rapidly, which was not the case in the years past. On top of that, we have other things planned for the future. Our provost, Adrian McCormick, is working on an academic master plan. You may recall when I got here four years ago, we had a working group that focused on what are our next programs we should develop, and they identified 10, eight of which have either been developed, looked at, and decided not to pursue, or in the process right now. Well, now the question is, what's next? So we're gonna to continue to look at new opportunities and new programs to build on the ones that we have done over the last few years and create, again, what I call often destination programs, programs that will bring students to winter who would not have come otherwise. One of those programs that's a destination program for us is our Bachelor's of Professional Studies. This again is a program focused on adult learners, 25 and up, which opens up a whole new marketplace for us. We got a boom for that last year, and we should have a new group coming in this spring. So while the trend doesn't look like we're going up, I still believe the 7,000 goal for 2025 is quite doable. All of these things sometimes take time. It reminds me a lot of when I was at the University of Louisville early in my career, we put together a similar plan at a similar time timeline and, and you know, four, four or five years into the plan, we're like, God, we're not achieving any of our goals in some of these areas. But the second five years is where we achieve those. And I think that's what you'll see with enrollment. The next five years will be even more positive. One area that we definitely need to focus on is retention. So last year, our retention rate among our freshmen went down 
again, this is a pretty big drop and something that we need to turn around in the future. So some of our decline in enrollment, we're not having as high numbers of enrollment is those early graduations, but some of it is we need to retain our students more. So this year, Adrian McCormick, as provost, got the leadership group together and said, we need to identify what's our wildly important goal or win. And all I thought was, it better be retention. And it was, so I'm very happy that I did not have to come in and say, you need to change your wildly important goal, but pick the right one. Uh, the process worked, and, the, and this really is, frankly, an area we need to focus on, and are already. So with the board this this past week, we discussed a number of things going on in every college, student affairs, across the university. Everyone's coming together and doing a much more coordinated effort to make sure that retention rate goes back up again next year. As we look at the makeup of our student body, I'm particularly pleased to talk about our diversity. We exceeded our 2023, our 2019 target at 42%. Now I sometimes get the question, why do we focus on diversity so much at Winthrop since we're already diverse? Well, we are a public university and we should reflect society. We should reflect the people around us. And so I don't see this just as a goal, I see this as an obligation, as an institution, as a public university, we should. We should reflect society. We should reflect the diversity in society, and we should be welcoming to all students, all students. And so that is our goal, that is our priority, and we know as this diversity increases in society, these numbers should increase as well. So creating that welcoming environment, um, I want to thank Kiyata Adams Brown, our Assistant Dean for Diversity, Engagement, and Inclusive Excellence, who leads us in this area. But this is a group effort. This is all faculty, staff, and students as well who create that welcoming environment so that all students feel like Winthrop is a place for them to be. So again, I'm particularly proud of what we've done in this area. Next goal, we also exceeded our goal on our target on undergraduate student placement. These are students who have either gone on to graduate school or who have uh, gone on to a job. And this is a number that any parent, myself included, cares very deeply about. And I can tell you, talking with legislators, they care deeply about this number as well. So we're making progress on this and want to continue to grow the success of our students after they leave us. Let's move on to goal two. Goal two mostly focuses on innovation and doing things better than others and engaging in activities that will raise our regional and national profile, much like I just talked about from the peer assessments from the US News and World Report, but also have an impact on the community. One thing I want to highlight for this year, while it's not necessarily a goal in our strategic plan, was the amount of external funding that came in. $9.3 million in total came in during the last year from a variety of different places. One was for the Center for Public Opinion and Policy Research, brought in $3.4 million for the work that they're going to do. Uh, this is led by Scott Huffman and his group and builds on the success of the Winter Plan, which has been around for a long time, but this is really taking it to another level for us. The second is a $900,000 grant that focuses on reducing the number of repeat drug offenders. This is work done in the social work department led by Dwayne Neff and Jessica Yang. So we thank them for their efforts and again this should have a huge community impact. The next grant was $3.8 million going to the College of Education. Um, this was led by Jen Gravestraw and Lisa Johnson. This is really focusing on getting highly qualified teachers in the places we need them the most and where it's the most difficult to do. So all of these are not only bringing resources to the institution, but they really are serving our community and, and creating programs that hopefully will be models for others. On top of that, we got a $1.2 million grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce that's focusing on our electrical system, as well as a number of other small grants and grants that all made up that $9.3 million total. We also continue to be leaders in developing programs that support our student experiences. Uh, just this past a couple weeks ago, we had Campus Safety Week at Winter, the most successful Campus Safety Week we've had. Um, got more attention, had more activities than we've ever had before. And as Monty and I reminded our students, this is just not a one-week activity. This is Winthrop Campus Safety 365. Hashtag Winthrop Campus Safety 365. This is a year-long effort to make sure that we continue to focus on safety and all that we do all year long. We were again voted a uh, voter-friendly campus, or designated as a voter-friendly campus for the second time in recent years, largely related to our efforts to get out the vote during the 2008 midterm elections. Our eSports program started, and much like I talked about with our athletic success with the other programs, if you follow them on Instagram, and I do, and I suggest that you do as well, uh, they are doing quite well in beating some of the best teams in the country already just in their first season. Um, on top of that, we also have our AMPD, APMD program, our AMP program, which is focused on accounting, um, 
professional development and mentoring, uh, this is a program that's focused on increasing the diversity in the accounting profession. Um, right now, we have about 31 students. Go back a second. Uh, we have about 31 students in the program. The upperclassmen have a grade point average of about a 3.5, which is particularly impressive in a program as difficult as accounting. And I want to add a little story here. Um, I was recently talking with an alum, an accounting alum from another institution, and he said he went to the people at his institution, so I was talking about this program, and he said, I want to give money so that you can give scholarships to diverse students because we need to increase diversity in the accounting profession. They said, we don't have any. And I said, well, we have a lot, and I will take your money tomorrow if you give it to me. Um, we are doing things that other institutions are really struggling to do, and we should be particularly proud of the AMP program and all that's happening there. Um, while we only added one other academic program, again, there's a number of minors we added, a number of other things that are increasing the opportunities for our students. And as I talked about with that academic master planning, we expect this number to continue to grow. So once again, the 2025 target, I think, is, is quite reasonable for us. One of the things we do need to focus on, and fell a little short on, is the number of high impact practices that our students engage in by their senior year. Uh, the Nestle survey looks at those who've had two or more, and we went down a little bit in that. We're still well above the national average, so don't get me wrong, this is not an area of weakness for us, but it's an area where we want to not just be good, we want to be great, we want to be leaders. And so we need to continue to focus on providing those other high impact practices for our students. I know that a lot of the deans and others are working on different plans that should increase this number going forward, but this again has to be a priority for us in the future. Goal three. This focuses on all of those who support the Winthrop experience, particularly our faculty and staff members. While it's not a metric, we're happy that we succeeded in taking the top spot among the 10 South Carolina four-year institutions in meeting our affirmative action goals in recruiting, retaining, and promoting minorities and women. So again, number one in the state, it's the first time, I don't know ever, but the first time in a long time that we've been in that position, so we're proud of that. Second thing, last year I became the first and still only South Carolina University president to sign on for the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion pledge. In fact, I checked it out and was the second CEO of any organization in South Carolina to sign and one of only four in South Carolina who've signed on to this at this point. This is an initiative developed by PricewaterhouseCoopers, who's also a partner with us in our AMP program, and it encourages CEOs to do a few things. One, engage in conversations around diversity and inclusion in the workplace, check that. Uh, provide unconscious bias training to employees, which we have been doing in many of our searches, check that. And share actions and initiatives with other CEOs and presidents. And again, in a couple weeks, Dan Jones and I will be heading to New York to take part in a meeting of the CEOs and diversity officers from those at different organizations and talk about what other places are doing and what things we may be able to find out from them, but also some of the things that we are doing and sharing that with them. So we're very proud of that and proud of being a leader in that area. And again, I talked about this back in January, but we have already exceeded our 2025 target and actually 2025 stretch target on increasing the diversity of our faculty and managerial staff. I uh, went from a baseline of 14% to 21% in just a few years, which again, this is another one, another one when I explained to people what we've done, they were quite surprised to hear about it. So again, proud of that. And if anyone has heard me speak about increasing diversity, they know that what I really am focused on is the process. And this is something that Zan and I talked about a lot. It's the process that really matters. At the end of the day, we always hire the best employee. But we know that there is definitely biases in the process. And the more we can reduce or eliminate those biases, the more likely we are to have diverse candidates and more likely we are to have diverse employees. That has been our focus, and that is what's been successful and allowed us to not only increase the diversity of our, our faculty and staff, but also bring in stronger faculty and staff and become known as a place that diverse faculty and staff want to go and work. So again, this is something we've been quite successful at and want to continue to work on. This is one we have not been as successful at, as many of you know. The faculty, staff, employees still is well below the Cooper median with only 29% at or above that Cooper median. Uh, right now, that has been a priority for us. We, we're working on a class and comp study, which should be done in the next couple of months. That will allow us to develop a plan that won't solve this problem overnight, but will give us a direction over the next five or six years that we can actually make progress on this and start to turn that red into a green. But we understand this is a priority. Again, 
the fact that the students have such an outstanding experience is because of our faculty and staff, and we need to find ways to reinvest in our faculty and staff. So this will continue to be a party. In the meantime, we have done. <laughs> Give most of the audience is faculty and staff. <laughs> In the meantime, we continue to try to do things that we thought would help faculty and staff. We started an employee assistance program last year. We're in the, uh, we're in the process of hiring an ombuds person, which was something the faculty and staff asked about. We're working with the faculty on a faculty relief program for tenured faculty. So we are continuing to make progress on those other things, those non-compensation issues in addition to the compensation issues. So we're not waiting just for the plan to be done. We've continued to take some action where we could. The fourth goal really focuses on the aspects of our campus and our university that support the student's experience, the, the winter experience. So it's our facilities, our technology, all of those different areas. So we've met our goal relative to upgrading classrooms with new technology. Again, this has got to be a priority for us as we have students coming in with um, higher understanding of technology, better use of technology, we want the classrooms that reflect it. One of the things we were able to do this year that we're particularly proud of is the new Lowenstein Exercise Science Laboratory over at the University Center at Knowledge Park. This is a 4,500 square foot facility that has both lab space and classroom space for 32 students. This will allow us to continue to provide an outstanding education for exercise science students, as well as to, to continue to grow a program with quite a bit of interest. So we're proud of the investment that we've been able to make in that and upgrading the technology in that facility as well. We also reached our target in 2019 for online and uh, hybrid programs. Again, based on things that I know about with our academic master planning, this is one we could, should continue to grow as well um, as we start to come up with new programs that we think will work well in an online environment and meet students who would not have come to Winthrop otherwise. Facilities. Okay, we've gone down, and it looks like we've gone down quite a bit. Here's the thing. This doesn't reflect all the projects that are in process. We got about $7.5 million from the state last year as, a, as an allocation to work on our facilities. But that's actually part of about $20.65 million that we come in, have coming in towards our facilities from either state, federal, um, fundraising, all kinds of different sources have brought in additional resources. So that's not coming out of any of our operating money or any of our regular university budget. About $20.65 million in facility projects that we are moving forward on. So this number should not only go up, but leave up pretty substantially in the next few years. On top of that, this past week, the Board of Trustees approved another $2.2 million use of net position to go towards facilities. And I'll get back to the net position discussion a little bit later, but that now gives us more resources that we can pour towards different projects, both on our, in our campus um, uh, residence halls, as well as other campus facilities. So we'll be moving forward with a lot of construction over the next few years. Brings to goal five, which is ensuring the financial stability and sustainability of the university. Again, none of the other things we talk about in the winter plan are possible if we do not have the resources to do it. So in many ways, this is a high priority for us and an area where we've had actually a considerable amount of success in the last year. While it is not part of our metrics, I did want to point out that monitoring and strengthening our unrestricted net position is one of the important ways we gauge our financial well-being. When looking at the true unrestricted net position, we really have had quite a bit of success over the last few years. We've gone up from about just over $10 million back in fiscal year 13 to 22.5 million. That is the largest unrestricted net position in Winthrop history. So we are the most financially stable we have been. That's an 111% increase over that short period of time. Remember when I talked about the facilities and the $2.2 million that the Board of Trustees allowed us to use? This is why. We now have gone over that 20 million mark, which we feel like is a good mark for us to be financially stable. Now we can start reinvesting some of that money back into the institution. So now that we've gotten to that point, it gives us a lot more flexibility going forward. So we're very happy with that number. What is part of our metrics is our debt ratio. When I arrived, we had a debt ratio of about 0.54. That's a relatively high debt ratio for an institution, and debt ratio really looks at how much debt you have relative to your assets. So 0.54 was relatively high. We wanted to get it down to about 0.40 by 2025, and we are just almost there. At 0.41, it's actually 0.406. Uh, we are really very close. We ground here, so I want to point out. That. 
those of us who like math are like we'll, we'll that's what we're but 4.06 is where we are today so by next year we should be down below that 0.40 number so achieving our goal once again well before the 2025 plan this is critical in a lot of ways one is we're using less of our resources towards debt that's helpful but also as we look forward at facility projects and other things it will start to free up our ability to borrow money again in the past, with that high of a debt ratio, it would have been very difficult to borrow money. As the debt ratio goes down, you can borrow money and put more money back into your facilities and infrastructure. Next, our unrestricted gift revenues last year. Again, we announced this back um, in January, but we were over 700,000 for only the second time in winter history, and again, exceeded our 2025 target on unrestricted giving. This was really the result of a lot of different efforts, uh, including donations from almost 1,700 people who gave unrestricted gifts in the last year, uh, but also the new Winter Leadership Society, which now is about 120 members and continues to grow almost daily. And those who are willing to make a five-year commitment of $1,000 or more, this provides financial stability for the foundation. It allows us to provide more scholarships for our students. It helps us in so many ways. And so we're very happy with the result that we see here. Likewise, we exceeded our goal on the size of the endowment. And frankly, if it wasn't for a really bad November, December last year, we would have exceeded our stress target, but that's passed. Um, we've gone actually quite a bit up from where we were in fall 2015, from 43 million up to 59 million. That's a 37% increase over that period of time. Uh, growing the endowment is important, again, provides scholarship, provides support for the institution in a variety of different ways. How did we do it? Well, some of it certainly was by reducing the management fee, and I've talked about this before. When I arrived, we had a management fee of 6%. We now have that down to 1.5%. So we're spending less money on our operations, which allows more money to go into the endowment and continue to grow that endowment. I thank the University, Winthrop University Foundation Board, who had a big part in helping to do this and, and planning this out over multiple years to do it in a way that didn't hurt the university but continue to improve the situation for the foundation and for our endowment and help us with our fundraising efforts, which are also growing. We increased our fundraising in 2018 compared to 2017. And I'm happy to say in 2019, we're ahead of the pace we were in 2018. So all of this uh, suggests good progress. A big thanks to the leadership of Evan Bonin, our Vice President for University Advancement and his team for all of their efforts in leading us uh, towards our fundraising goals. However, much like everything else, this is a team effort. Our athletic department continues to grow their fundraising raising success as well and welcomed 700, 600 members into the Eagle Club in 2018-19, which was a record for them. I will say as of October 1st of this year, they were up 37% compared to where they were this time last year. So again, the trend is positive and continues to grow. Now, I will say right now, this is the most critical time for our fundraising. Uh, anybody who watches college football, what do they do in the fourth quarter? Yeah, put the four fingers up. The fourth quarter is the most important quarter in college football, professional football. It's also the most important quarter for those of us in fundraising. This is usually where most of the money comes in. So every little bit that everybody can do to help us move forward really makes a big difference, particularly in that fourth quarter. So if you see Evan and his team walking around like this, we tell them all, you know why. They are focused on that fourth quarter. They know how critical this period of time is for us. And we need that support from our alumni and friends. Um, we did have an increase again, or we did have an increase, I should say, last year in our alumni giving. Um, it still is not where we want it to be, and so we're hoping to continue to grow that. One of the things we did this year for the first time ever is had a day of giving. Did that back in April. Um, had a number of people who were able to contribute on that day. So we continue to build on different activities that gets our alumni giving back up to where we would like it to be. I want you to know that all of the information I presented, as well as specific results for each metric in the plan, is being uploaded to the website today. Check out the winter plan on the left side links on my webpage. I hope you'll kind of take some time to go through all the information. There's a lot more on there than what I was able to cover today. And let me end with a few final thoughts. Um, several years ago, I was at a different institution, and I ran into one of the people at the athletic department, and I'm a sports management faculty member, and she said to me, we were just talking about you. That can go good or bad. And I wasn't really sure what direction it was going to go. And what she said always stuck with me. She goes, as you bring in better students, our athletic department gets better. And as our athletic department gets better, you recruit better students. We work together. The relationship, you go up and down together. Well, I will say the same thing is true with Rock Hill and York County. 
as those areas improve, the areas around us improve, that helps out Winthrop, and as Winthrop improves, that helps out them. And boys, things are exciting on Winthrop, things are exciting in Rock Hill as well. One of the things we're particularly excited about is the MyRide free electric bus system. That's free not only for our students, but for all community members. We are an active partner in that bus system, helped to get it going. It started in July, it's already exceeding the targets that they thought they would hit in the first year for ridership. So we never really knew for sure how much the ridership would be, but we're already past what we thought would be a reasonable target, only about 16 weeks into that, that new bus system. But that's not it. Uh, BMX is coming back again for the World Championships, you may have seen that. The Panthers are moving the training facility, they kept that on the down low, most people don't know about that, but I can confirm it is actually happening. <laughs> Uh, we are working actively with the Panthers to find partnership opportunities there as well. Uh, the new sports and event center that's going to be built at the University Center at Knowledge Park is going to provide lots of opportunities. One of those is the NCAA uh, Development Camp. We're one of four sites for the NCAA Development Camp that's coming here next summer. Um, that relationship with the community, with Visit York County, has allowed things like that to happen. You may have seen last Friday we signed the agreement on Miracle Park which again will provide an opportunity for all citizens to participate in recreational activities as well as a number of opportunities for our faculty and students uh, to collaborate, do research, and do other things. And just in general, the quality of life around the Winter Print Campus is going to continue to get better. We're going to see more restaurants, more shops, more things to do, more places to live, more opportunities. And so we're excited about what's happening. Clearly our future and our community's future are intertwined, and we're happy to see that both those futures look very, very bright. Let me finish with some final words directed at the winter of faculty, staff, and students. As I pointed out, there is clearly still work to do. There are some areas of focus for the next year, so you're not done yet. We still have a lot that we have to work on, but I would be remiss if I did not say a big congratulations for what you've accomplished over the last three years in the winter plan. I get the opportunity in my role frequently to talk to other higher education professionals from around the country. And I can be honest, when I talk about the things that have happened here in the last few years, they're often amazed at what you've achieved. And not just in one area, but in multiple areas that I just discussed, whether graduation rates, diversity, all of those fundraising, all of the things that you've been able to do, it's not one area, but it's multiple areas. And you've far exceeded what other institutions have been able to do in that same time frame. And they're amazed because they get it. They're in higher education. And not just higher education at any time, higher education today, at this moment, which is particularly challenging, they know none of the things that you've done is easy, they know it's hard. And they know that you've accomplished a lot. So you should be very proud of what you have achieved, and frankly, I'm incredibly proud of all of you. Um, one of the things that you probably don't know is I write about you all a lot. Um, and not just the handful of people that I got to mention in my speech, but so many more people. I talk about the success, the, the fact that I get to be surrounded by so many uh, incredibly talented people. And so I feel fortunate to have spent these last few years working on the Winter Plan with you. Um, I'm very proud of what you all have accomplished, and I want to say one last word. Just thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all that you do for Winthrop and for this university. Have a great day.